This podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries. Unauthorized duplication, distribution, or exhibition may result in civil liability, criminal prosecution, and the wrath of the tall man. <laughs> Boy! Thank you for checking out 90 for Chill, the podcast. This week there will not be a guest. Yes, I chose to binge some bad movies to make a show, but I cannot expect that of everyone else who can find reason to celebrate. Might get depressing. There's a good trigger and context warning. I think I'll just let the first review kind of set the tone for the new year. Bear with me and hope you enjoy. Well, your eyes are a little bit dilated and unresponsive. Um, So what did you take? Better than heroin, LSD, or X. This is the world's perfect drug. (laughs) Don't look at me like that, like I'm some kind of freak. You want it, too. You're still fighting it, but you want it. It's not the drug, Tuesday. Desire's inside of us. The drug just lets us be who we really are. You're thinking about it now, aren't you? (laughs) I'm not going back out there. Oh, my God, no! Boy tried to defend himself, but he was too drunk. (laughs) We didn't know it had side effects. So we're starting 2023 off with a movie that, dare I say, Amber Heard was the best thing about. All right, so that's um, not how you really want to start, I guess, a show this year, but I digress. So the movie I watched was Side Effects. This is something I was curious about when I saw the VHS uh, tape at a couple of Walmarts back in central Illinois. We're talking uh, 2006, and it was a situation where uh, I was, hey, well, I was pretty much sponsoring a harem of, (laughs) harem's not really uh, the appropriate term, not enough women, I guess uh, a clique of junkies, a lot of my trauma, honestly, but Needless to say, they couldn't afford cable. They had a VCR and a very small television. So any kind of tape we could find, we were watching. And as I say, this was on the the, uh, shelves at Walmart. And it's kind of like, well, I shouldn't even say say shelves. Definitely one of those uh, displays, dare I say, an end cap, I guess, is what we use in retail now. So needless to say, I didn't buy the tape because I thought it was kind of tacky, you know, being uh, hanging out with a bunch of junkies. And this is a film about a regular old early noughties douchebag, bleach hair and all, hosting a party, which he intended to do at his ex-girlfriend's house, which he hasn't moved out of. And the selling point of this Halloween party is that he's got the newest designer drug called Ace. And after essentially drugging his girlfriend, his ex, for kicks, suddenly a bunch of weird, violent attacks have happened through Dallas. You've got two people who were just devoured by dogs, and that's what they're assuming. And then you have bad press saying oh is it cult related something like that so and we find out from a guy who reinvented a drug from medieval times that is the source of all vampiric stories is doing his best to try to stop it and no that he's just there for an exposition dump all the acting is pretty just walk people walking through it except when somebody's supposed to be douchey you really really hate them and it opens with some promise you know oh somebody gets roofied and she goes and eats the guy so yeah this is actually kind of empowering but um and amanda her uh amber heard is not the lead 
for you Johnny Depp fans. She gets it pretty nice, nasty, though. I mean, it's not something anybody's going to remember. It's very... It drags. And it's only 90 minutes. So, obviously, that should not be the case. So you get an hour of exposition, and then you get to your third act, and they even figure out a way to make that drag. So... There's some good ideas, good concepts, which I can understand, hey, um, you know, let's throw some money at this. But then, you know, this is 2004, shot on videotape, which, not to say I haven't seen this stuff, but, you know, if I wasn't going into this prepared for a bad movie, I would be very miffed. Like, I guess there had to be boom operators, according to the credits there were, and since you definitely didn't do any ADR, it's just, um, and there's just so, uh, there's so much potential in the premise, and it's probably just some, uh, douchebag director who's like, no, it's my idea, I'm gonna make it, so, with that said, um, for my screenplay, Man of the Dead, my pro professional wrestling zombie comedy... I am more than open not to direct. <laughs> so uh, I just want to get that thing made. So that's, um, you know, you got to know your know your boundaries, I suppose. And I just, as I say, you can't... If you're going to make a bad movie, you can do it tongue-in-cheek and be appreciated. I could do that. Give me some good set pieces. Like, the end should be Night of the Demons and... Oh, no nothing close to that so and the vampire element is kind of dropped i mean there's a lot of good 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 concepts just you can't when you have something that's good like this you can't drop the ball that's the most disappointing thing about it it's like nope we're just gonna we're just gonna tape it and i'm surprised the people they were able that they even got people who have imdb pages as I say, Amber Heard primarily. So, yeah. So this was basically a watch from my Netflix DVD. So I could go and jump to my next... D get send this in the mail. Get to my next DVD. So I can somehow compose a Chris Jericho dedicated episode. So, 2023. I'd say the year of the Ocho, but he's probably got a new gimmick by now. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. Thank you for checking out 90 for Chill, the podcast. This is your host, Cool Movie Star is the handle that I try to get over. Cat Bus Russ is what my fellow podcasters know me best as. And if you need Amazon Echo or Google Nest to give you access to my podcast, Ask It to Play podcast by Russ Stevens. You can follow what I'm watching on Letterboxd. The username is CM Darth. And if you want to bitch about the podcast, please do that over on my Twitter account at Cat Bus Russ. Or hey, let's branch out. Let's do Mastodon. That username and bear with me, is at Russ Stevens, all one word, at mastodon.social. So I'm ready to get rid of Elon Musk. How about you? And as I said, I do have plans on a Chris Jericho podcast with getting side effects out of the way. I just have one movie I need to get through Netflix, and then maybe I have to tackle Terrifier, but otherwise I'll be ready to do that. So... But I'd rather have guests on the show. Now, if you want to talk about Chris Jericho, <clears throat> that would be great. I mean, 2, 0, plus 2, plus 3. No, that's 7. I was trying to make it the year of the Ocho. It's just not going to work out. So if you want to be on the show, send me a suggestion of a movie, a director, an actor, a theme. Just focus on sub-100 minute narratives as long as it concludes before the credits roll. I am happy to talk about it. And there's other tricks around that. Believe me, I can put a little thought into that. So those suggestions, please send them to my email address. That's russthebus07 at gmail.com. That's R-U-S-S-T-H-E-B-U-S-0-7 at gmail.com. 
as I say, offer me a movie, director, actor, theme, and we'll make a slice of fried gold, as Sean from Shaun of the Dead would say. And I haven't tackled the Cornetta trilogy, so uh, there's a suggestion there. Otherwise, I guess I'm doing all right. Uh, New Year was kind of quiet for me. I kind of wore myself out after my uh, trivia team, Shrug Emoji, won the Poor Bros Trivia Night, I believe, for the first time. I haven't checked the see if they got pictures of us with the championship belt, but, you know, social media. Honestly, not really my thing. <laughs> uh, but I got burnt out after a rendition of Suffragette City at the Guido's bar, and then, you know, just a poor goth night, honestly. Uh, just the tunes weren't there, man. And, you know, random girl who ghosted me. A lot of bollocks going into 2023, so I'm just going to do my best to try to be optimistic, save my energy up. I got to try to do an all-nighter to catch Wrestle Kingdom tomorrow, so that's my plans, but after that, plenty of pl time to talk about movies, so again, just send an email to rustthebus07 at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to get you on the show. Otherwise... Rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast apps. Five-star reviews, preferably. I will reciprocate. My username is Scoop Staley on Apple. And if you want to talk trash about the podcast, as I said, at CatBusRuss. That's not going to affect the algorithm. Otherwise, thank you, Stacia Hardin, for still being an inspiration. I mean, you haven't been around for almost 20 years now. Coming up on 19, I shouldn't be that depressed. But, hey, I'm recording this on a Monday, the most depressed day of the year, if I'm correct. Who knows, it might be the 8th, but I digress. So, needless to say, Stacia's my inspiration, and as long as I can honor her, I think I'm doing all right. So, hey, we end on a note of optimism, and you're going to be surprised, I kind of got very optimistic about the following feature so listen to the review and enjoy 90 for chill the podcast proudly presents to you ali's accessories shop on etsy's trash feature review we are in the last city on earth some call it the perfect society but others know better government control is total people disappear as though they never existed but there are rebels who believe in freedom and who fight in the name of the disappeared i am one of them The government's protecting something. We want you to eliminate Chairman Goodchild. Do this, and we will have our victory. Ready? Always. I keep off the grass. She's coming. Get to a safe place. Good boys. Our world is beautiful, worth preserving at any cost. You're pathetic. I'm afraid we're going too far. There's a war, and people on all sides die. Amateurs. You may want to duck. So, Eon Flux from 2005. Now, honestly, it takes a while to get going, but once we finally nail down the science and the science fiction, it's, it's kind of intriguing. And the performances are pretty wooden, but that's more to blame the dialogue. I will give credit to the late... Uh, Peter Postlewaite, his his performance is spot on as the, I don't know if he was a computer or 
whatever, basically a database for DNA. So the movie is about Ian Flux going for revenge against the leader of society based on the family that saved us from a virus that annihilated 99% of it. So this heir to the good child family uh, seemed to have an iron fist when it comes to resistance and hence killed his, killed Eon's sister. So it's a vengeance story, but once she gets to her opportunity to, uh, to kill uh, Trevor Goodchild, played by Martin Sokis, probably best known for his uh, villain role in Triple X from 2001. She's unable to do it and eventually results in a team up. The action is nothing to speak speak home about. I would say Ultraviolet may have done it better, but this is pretty heartless action is what the problem is. It's like definitely wanting the PG-13 rating. Let's make sure everybody is masked so nobody can put a face to a death, I suppose. When you only really have four or five characters tops in this movie, you just don't care about the bodies around you. So in this sense, it's just bad Wachowski sisters action, which has kind of inspired me like to give, uh, let's see, what movie Jupiter Ascending, I suppose, a go? Because it's kind of... Uh, well, it's an action movie. The only other one I can think of is um, Cloud Atlas, which is not. So, yeah, it makes me further appreciate the Matrix uh, features, all four of them. But as I say, it's this ends up kind of being inoffensive uh, once you find out it's a big cloning scheme. Sorry to spoil that for you. But, you know, now that you know, you can cut 45 minutes in and uh, not miss anything. So as I say, the action just doesn't feel personal, so it's not visceral, so this is not Atomic Blonde. And then there's so much uh, CGI-dependent elements in the feature that it just takes you out of any kind of action sequence, which is kind of sad. This is the second feature, I believe, from director Karen Kusama. I have not seen Girl Fight, but I definitely am a huge fan of Jennifer's body, so there's a lot of good things going on. Or I should say there's a lot of good things around the feature that if you focus on those, it isn't really a waste of time. Uh, the only thing I really can say that didn't go right is Johnny Lee Miller's performance. I, I hope he was redubbed. Like, it just doesn't sound like him or anything. So anybody excited for that? And I guess you could say it also wasted Francis McDormand. But, you know, everything corrects itself eventually so if you're bored um and this doesn't pay the tv show a lot of homage uh, i'll say that i guess the problem well and but now back it up like this could have been fixed say if we really remember what the shorts were about which is basically ian um eon sorry uh working her ass off to complete a mission and end up dying anyhow. So, you know, once you bring in the cloning element, like, oh, we could have just kept doing this over and over again. And, like, oh, there's so many, there's so much possibility. So I don't know if I'm... <laughs> Let's just leave this property to uh, original creator Peter Chung and, you know, just have this as a time capsule and... Who knows, you know, back in 2005, if you bought the full screen version, did not catch that when I picked this up. I probably got this in Peoria's uh, Mega Replay. They still have the flyer in there for get $5 back by mail when you buy Aeon, Aeon Flux, the complete animated collection, and Aeon Flux, the movie, on DVD. So, hey, you had till the 25th of... July in 2006 to recognize that so it's not as bad as I expected and with that you know just kind of pleasantly surprised Charlene Theron's good background imagery to keep you distracted 
Can I hear a wahoo?